Hey guys, Dr. Matt Najad here, and I'm going to be talking to you about one of my favorite topics called deep margin elevation. And I'm going to be covering the technique, including some of my favorite products from Garrison Dental that help make the procedure manageable, even in the toughest situations. So like I mentioned in this video, we're going to be covering the deep margin elevation technique and some of the different materials I use to manage even the most difficult situations. There's a lot of confusion about what deep margin elevation is, and that's part of the problem. So we're going to be covering that. And it's very important to have a good understanding of what the deep margin elevation is and how it can be used properly. So first of all, deep margin elevation is intended to manage deep margins like this. So when you look at something like this, you would typically have a challenge to do an adhesive restoration because of isolation and also the location of this margin here being significantly subgingival and near the alveolar crest. And there's a lot of different ways that that's been managed traditionally, but with the deep margin elevation technique, this is a perfect case to handle and restore this conservatively. So there's a lot of different situations that arise clinically that are optimal for deep margin elevation, whether that is recurrent decay under an existing class two restoration, or even um, first time carries in proximal areas extending deeper than you can treat with a straightforward direct or indirect restoration. In a traditional approach, these were either handled by crown lengthening procedures or they were handled by being considered unrestorable and having replacement with an implant. And in my opinion, that's happening way too often. People are extracting teeth in favor of implants. We have to remember that implants have a great long-term prognosis. However, they also have complications and there's nothing better than keeping natural teeth. And that's what the biomimetic approach is all about. In the biomedic approach, the goal is to keep teeth for life. It's to preserve pulp vitality, conserve tooth structure. This whole paradigm is intended to not only give us the best, most natural restoration, but also to kind of break the routine cycle of procedures that results in teeth being extracted and replaced with implants. And I think it's the best way to practice. There's a lot of science behind it. In the deep margin elevation, sorry, in the biomedic approach, the deep margin elevation technique is a great technique to be able to handle these situations where you have a deep cervical margin. And the goal is to relocate that margin and bring it to an area where you can maintain isolation and restore the tooth without having to do more invasive procedures. The key is that you need to have optimal isolation. And whether you use an isolite or a rubber dam or any other form of isolation, when you place a deep margin elevation band, as I'm gonna show you, you create a very nice seal that allows you good isolation for just enough time to perform this technique. And that's one of the keys into the success of this procedure. So the proper materials and techniques are part of how this procedure works and how you can be successful when you do the deep margin elevation. There's also a lot of science behind this technique. So I actually learned how to do a deep margin elevation back in 2008 in dental school. I graduated in 2010. It was part of my standard education. And over the years, there's been a variety of studies that have come out and they call this deep margin elevation or cervical margin relocation. And the idea behind it is that you elevate that margin and all the studies that have looked at it have found either uh, good results or acceptable results. There's been really nothing to show that it's an unacceptable technique. And the most important variable when you perform this technique is the operator and the uh, procedure and how it's done. Because some deep margin elevations might not do so well, but that goes hand in hand with how well they were done. What I'm gonna show you is a predictable way to do it using the right materials and techniques. I also cover this technique in my courses. So to get more details and demonstrations on deep margin elevation, go ahead and scan this QR code. I have an online course that covers all aspects of biomedic dentistry. The level one course covers everything for directs and indirect restorations, including the deep margin elevation. So what's the problem with trying to get good isolation for these deep margins? Well, when you place a matrix band, the first problem is as you tighten, it usually wants to get hung up or 
constricted towards the area of the widest contour of the tooth or the height of contour. So in other words, you don't get a great seal in the cervical area or the deep area where you need it the most. And that's because the band is tall and as you tighten it, it gets hung up. So the technique calls for customizing a band. So traditionally we would customize a matrix band. And more recently, over the last five years or so, we've had options that have the band already customized for you so that when you tighten the band, as you see here in this demonstration, you're able to have a nice tight seal right around the cervical margin here. And that's very important because if you don't get that good seal, then the technique will have problems. But if you get a nice seal and you can perform the technique properly, it's, it's uh, tolerated very well by the tissue. It's a very successful technique and using this band is part of the key to success. So my favorite variety of this band is called the Real Matrix Deep Margin Elevation Band. It consists of a real matrix handle here, and this handle is used to tighten the reel, place it um, around the tooth, and I like this so much more than a standard Toffelmeyer because a standard Toffelmeyer retainer has its heavy weight. That heavy weight wants to displace the band, and the most important thing when you're doing these techniques after you get good isolation or good adaptation is to make sure you maintain that isolation. If there's anything that's gonna cause movement or displacement of the band at the wrong time, it'll ruin all your work. And when you have this nice little reel that doesn't have a lot of weight to it, it's very easy to perform this technique well. So my favorite variety is this, and I've worked with Garrison many years ago, five, six years ago actually, to make sure that we were able to develop this product specifically for that purpose. When you place this reel in, it adapts very nicely. Most of the time in straightforward cases, it gives you great adaptation like we see here without any sort of modification or different accessories. So that's how we handle straightforward ones. So let's go ahead and go through a clinical case demonstrating how you can use this in a straightforward deep margin elevation. So in this case, this is the same case I showed you the x-ray of earlier. We had a deep carious lesion. I removed the existing restoration and the overgrown tissue so that I could assess the condition and depth of the margin. Then I placed the isolate in place. Sorry, I placed the rubber dam in place so that I could have good isolation. And then I put the deep margin elevation band on. I oftentimes will use two of these. The first one I put on as I'm finishing my caries clean out, whether I'm using a burr or air abrasion, then I replace it immediately before I actually build up that proximal wall so that it's very clean and it doesn't have any scratches or dents or folds in it. So that's a very good way to do this, to plan on doing it with one band while you're finishing the procedure and one band during the procedure. Take a look here, you can see how in this situation here, we have the really good adaptation and look how low this band can go. We're going all the way down to the gingival margin location and able to get the band to stay there without any sort of uh, restriction and it forms a really nice seal. Then you can go ahead and apply your dentin bonding agent, so your primer, your adhesive, and we'll do the deep margin elevation. Traditionally, a deep margin elevation is the term used for the relocation of that margin for an indirect restoration, such as an inlay or an onlay. But you can use the term more loosely just to be used anytime you're trying to elevate that margin, even if you're gonna do a direct restoration. In that case, you would do the margin elevation and then switch your matrix band and continue like you're doing a standard class two. And that's a very popular technique as well. So here we have the, um, the immediate dentin sealing, which is a technique that includes the dentin bonding agent, the adhesive, a thin layer of flow, and now I am building up this wall. So here you can see an increment of composite. This composite is about one or two millimeters in height. The goal is to bring up the margin in this area to be equigingival. Okay, so you're trying to bring that deep cervical margin up to the gingival margin level. 
You can be half a millimeter super gingival, half a millimeter sub gingival. The key is not to have too much composite. If you do a very tall deep margin elevation, you have a few problems, including oftentimes you're not leaving yourself enough contour to shape the restoration. So you're gonna have an awkward contact. The other problem is you're adding more and more polymerization stress. This is the margin that's most likely to fail from having inadequate adhesion. And one of the techniques that you can use to maximize the bond here is to control your polymerization stress using less material with a smaller increment or as little material as possible gives you the bond to that area without additional polymerization stress. Bonds get stronger with time, so you're allowing time for that to mature. And then when you go to do your indirect restoration, all you need to do is make sure you now have a condition where you can maintain this isolation. So take a look at this. This is the completed deep margin elevation. And it's probably not too hard to imagine that this is easy for me to deliver my final restoration with optimal condition. So I can deliver this indirect restoration. This is a Emax inlay. And with this, I'm able to really get a optimal result. Looking at the radiographs for this, we can see the initial condition. We can see the deep margin elevation completed, and then we can see the final situation. And um, I did do a little mesial composite for this little area over here. Instead of taking away more tooth structure, in the biomedic approach, my goal is to preserve more tooth structure, and there's no reason to you know, change to a more aggressive restoration over a very small little direct restoration there. Always, I always try to check my deep margin elevation on preparation day to ensure that I have good contour, no open margin, no overhang. It's very important because you don't wanna run into problems later, so I verify that. When you're using this matrix band, you get really good adaptation. Most of the time, unless you are inadvertently missing the margin or on top of the margin, so you just have to make sure you place it correctly and you'll have very little finishing. In some situations, it's hard to get the right adaptation because of the shape of the tooth. So look at this one. This is a very flat tooth preparation where I don't really have any area for any matrix to sit easily, but that's where this firm matrix, this is a firm matrix 3D fusion band from Garrison, and it has a very stiff contour. So look how nicely it can stay in place here and um, I can place that in there without anything else. Or if I need a little bit of extra adaptation, I can place a little bit of Teflon tape on the outside of the band so that it kind of puts a little pressure on it. Also, when you use the rubber dam, if you get this band in between the rubber dam and the tooth, when the rubber dam is released, it kind of has like a rubber band elastic effect where it pushes it against the tooth. So that's one of the advantages as well. But the most important thing is that the contour and stiffness of this band makes it a very useful technique so that sometimes I can do a deep margin elevation like you see here and I'm able to elevate that area right back here actually. And then I can do my indirect restoration. In this case, we did a uh, ceramic crown adhesively retained. So there's really no retentive design here, but strong adhesion with the biomedic approach makes these restorations very successful. I know that for some people, when they see this, they imagine that won't survive, but I've been doing things like this since 2010 with extremely high success rate. It's all, in the bond strength and the technique. So once you have those mastered, you can do things like this routinely and that's the future of dentistry. So optimal isolation is imperative to get this technique done. Sometimes I use something called a matrix within a matrix. So when you look at this, you see that we have the real matrix band and then we have a separate sectional matrix band between it. And I haven't finished tightening, so I still have a little bit of room here to tighten this band and pull things in tighter, but I'm demonstrating that this is not adequate isolation. If you cannot keep it dry while you're doing the procedure, you'll run into problems. But if you can get good isolation, you can get really strong bond there and really good results, and that's the key to success. Nowadays, I'm using a stiff matrix band in place of this standard sectional band you see here, and that helps as well. 
You can do other things as well, such as placing Teflon tape again on the outside. You can pack a cord on the outside of the matrix band. You can even place the cord right here between the two matrix bands. You're trying to find ways that will give you a firm pressure. So you, if you can get very innovative with this, you can think outside of the box and come up with a solution. But the thing is, you don't want to use a wedge. And that's your first reaction to take a wedge, place it here. Usually if you place a wedge, you're going to make the matrix band fully fold over. If it folds over or dents, you're gonna have a bad contour and that's not acceptable. There's one exception. The exception is these uh, 3D Fusion wedges. These 3D Fusion wedges have a silicone outer carrier with these little fins. And if you use a small one, or if you use the right size one for the occasion, you're not going to get too much pressure. And those little silicone uh, fins will help apply pressure. So I find myself using this as well. So what we did is we put together all the different products that I'm using for anything from simple to complex deep margin elevations. And we made this kit. You can scan the QR code to be taken straight to the page where you can purchase this. The kit includes 50 deep matrix margin elevation bands with that real variety that I showed you. It comes with 30 of those firm bands in a combination of molar and deep subgingival bands. It has 80 wedges, 20 of each size, and one real matrix handle. This combination will handle most any deep margin elevation that you encounter with great success. And it makes it easy to do this procedure when you know you have everything you need. So I highly recommend this product and I've been using it myself in uh, my office since you know 2015 when they first came out. I've been using them. Before they came out, we used to customize them ourselves. So the real matrix has been around for a while, but they didn't have the deep margin elevation variety. So I used to cut it myself, load it in there, make it all happen. And eventually I was able to convince them to provide this product to make the technique more readily accessible and manageable for you all. So I hope that's something that more and more people will continue to appreciate.